if you own vintage Revere Wear copper bottom cookware, you can remove tarnish using Twinkle Copper Cleaner. The results of your excessive elbow grease are a series of assorted pots and pans beautiful enough to display in the gallery of an art museum. In 1994, Metro North took over the operation of New York City's Grand Central Terminal and began extensive renovations. It was during this restoration process I read that the Municipal Art Society sponsored walking tours of this glorious rail station. I made a reservation because during the tour, participants moved through the catwalks positioned high above the terminal. After our guide arrived, he made a brief introduction highlighting Grand Central's history. After his talk, one of my comrades asked if Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis called the Municipal Art Society in 1975 and asked what she could do to help save Grand Central from the wrecking ball. Our expert confirmed this was a fact and gave us the nuts and bolts of the story. The court had voided Grand Central's landmark designation in early 1975, clearing the way for the railroad to build over the station with a design that looked like a shoebox lid standing on its side. This outraged Mrs. Onassis, and she joined forces with the Municipal Art Society as the featured speaker at a press conference in Grand Central's Oyster Bar. In addition, she wrote a letter to New York Mayor Abraham Beam with the goal to convince him to spend money he didn't have and fight the railroad's development plans. Within a week of receiving her letter, Beam announced that he would appeal. Shortly thereafter, the court designated Grand Central a landmark. About halfway through the tour, we got the bad news. Our group cannot pass through the catwalks because of the perils associated with an active rebuilding site. But what we saw, and what I look for every time I visit Grand Central, was the dark spot on the ceiling near the northwest corner where the celestial blue of the ceiling mural meets the marble. This nine by five inch rectilinear stain is a relic of an era when smoking indoors was routine. Before the renovation, the entire ceiling had this unwanted finish, which came mostly from cigarette tar and nicotine. In 2003, I did an installation in my studio inspired by this spot. About a week before Peekskill's annual open studio event, I noticed how tarnished my copper bottom tea kettle was. I was on this binge of painting color effects using a set of equal-sided crosses of decreasing size placed one inside the other. I formed a one by one inch cross on the copper bottom of my tea kettle with scotch blue original painter's tape and used twinkle to clean around it. After completing the process, I lifted off the tape to reveal the dark cross beneath. I positioned the tea kettle upside down on a white pedestal and named the work Grand Central. It was my way of paying homage to Grand Central's pensive grime 
dirt that took over 80 years to develop and a truer witness to mankind's recklessness. The strangely painted constellations wait patiently overhead for one of us to start making sense.